All right, let's take a look at how to find the derivatives of exponential functions other than base e. Now, this new rule is going to look like this, but before we do it, let's back up and look at a previous rule we've looked at before. Uh, previously, you had this. If you wanted to find the derivative with respect to x of, and we looked at e to the u. So suppose it was base e, and the rule we came up with was the derivative of e to the u. It's the original e function times the derivative of its exponent. So it looks like that. Now, the only difference between this E rule and this new A rule is this. What this is, it's finding the derivative of any base other than E. And actually, you'll see later on, you can use it for E itself. But rather than having E to the U, suppose you had 5 to the U or 7 to the U. So any base other than E. And all it really does is this. If you look at the rule, it adds one extra part to it. Uh, you've still got uh, these two pieces right here where you have... Um, a to the u times the derivative of the exponent, which is like this one over here. But it's going to add, and we'll put it in red where it kind of stands out, all it does is add this third part to the definition. So when you're using it, it's actually a little bit easier if you write it out kind of in English, or we'll do it like this. So the derivative of a to the u would be the following. It's uh, the natural log of the base. So the natural log of the base times the original function, so the original a function, and then finally the last part is nothing more than the derivative of the exponent. So the derivative of the exponent. So if you work the problems out, if you just say it like that, so the natural log of the base times the original function times the derivative of the exponent, and if you kind of say it in English as you do it, it makes them pretty straightforward. So let's look at a few examples and see how this works. It's actually a pretty easy rule to use. Okay, first of all, if you're lucky, uh, this is going to be a, a number raised to the x power, where this is e to the x. Let's compare these two. So what the new rule says is that y prime, so y prime, would be equal to uh, the natural log of the base, so it'll be the natural log of 4, times the original function, times the derivative of the exponent, well, the derivative of the x is 1. So you just wind up with natural log of the base, and that's the derivative. Now let's take a look at this one we've had before. y is equal to e to the x. Now, the previous rule said that it was just equal to the original e function times the derivative of the exponent. But this time, let's try it using this new rule, and you'll see that this new rule works also for this problem with e. So the new rule says that it's the natural log of the base times the original function times the derivative of its exponent, which is 1. Now, we'll simplify this one a little farther. Remember, the natural log of e is just equal to 1. So what this does, it changes it into y prime would be equal to, and the only thing that's left over is this e to the x. Well, you might remember our rule. We found that the derivative of e to the x is e to the x. So what this means is uh, that you can use this new rule, and we'll back up to it just for a second here. You can use this new A rule for all problems, including the e to the x. So what that means in effect is really if you want to, you don't even need this rule right here. So you can completely skip this rule because it's included in this rule. So this rule works for any base, including e. So if you use it, it'll work all the time. Okay, let's try a couple more examples here um, using this one. <clears throat> okay, so the derivative of this would be y prime, and we'll just say, if you say the three parts as you write, it makes it pretty easy. So it's the natural log of the base times the original function times the derivative of the original function, which is just 1. Now suppose, though, that the exponent were something more complicated than just a simple x. 
Uh, if it's just a simple X, this will always turn into 1, so in effect you can ignore it. But if it's not just a simple X, then you can consider it to be a composite type function, and you still apply the rule. So the rule says it's the natural log of the base times the original function. But now this time you have to add this last part times the derivative of the exponent, which is 6x, and you'd be done. So it's got three parts. Natural log of the base, original function, derivative of the exponent. Okay, let's take a look at the next problem. All right, now on this one, you've got a constant out in front, and that doesn't change it much. Let's go ahead and try this. So y prime, y prime, is going to be equal. First of all, you've got the constant 6. Now, just go ahead and find the derivative of this uh, using the new definition. So it's the natural log of the base times the original function, so 3 to the 7x plus 4, then times the derivative of the exponent. So now, just look at the exponent right here and find the derivative of this. Well, the derivative of 7x plus 4 would just be 7, and the derivative of a constant would be 0. And then just put brackets around the whole thing. So again, the three-part definition. Now, in this next problem, I'm just show you some variations. This is a product rule problem. What you've got is a first function times a second function. So there is the first, and there is the second, so you're going to have to use the product rule. So it's going to be the first times the derivative of the second plus the second times the derivative of the first, but you'll have to use this new rule. So when you do, here's what you come up with. Uh, it would be equal to the original first, so 5 to the x power, then times the derivative of the second. Go okay, stick that one in brackets. But this is the power rule. So this would be just 5 times x to the fourth, and put a plus. Well, what that is, that is the first times the derivative of the second, so you're halfway through the problem. Then uh, you've got the original second, which is x to the fifth, times the derivative of the first, but now you're going to have to use this new three-part rule. So that's going to be the natural log of the base times the original function times the derivative of the exponent, which would be 1. So what that's going to give you, this would be the second times the derivative of the first. So again, uh, you can use this new rule within the product rule or the quotient rule or any of the other rules. Okay, so that's an example of uh, exponent, you're finding the derivative of uh, an exponential function of base a. Now let's take a look at, suppose you had the same thing but with logs. So this time we want to find, rather than a raised to a power, we want to find the log of u to the base a. <clears throat> and this definition will be the, kind of a three-part definition again. 1 over the natural log of the base times the original argument times the derivative of the original argument. And before we go on, let me just kind of compare that one to this, uh, what, we had the, what we've had before. Um, this would be equal to... <clears throat> The, and I want to compare it to the natural log one. So we've had the derivative with respect to x of the natural log of u. Now remember that just had two parts. It was 1 over the argument times the derivative of the argument. Now that's if it was natural log of u. Well now what you've got is the log to some other base. So it adds this one extra part just like it did before. The only difference is you pick up this one extra part in the front. Otherwise, it's the same definition. Okay, so uh, with that in mind, let's try a couple of examples and see what this looks like. So again, it's 1 over natural log of the argument times the original argument, or natural log of the base times the original argument times the derivative of this. So let's look at a couple of examples. Okay, now again, just use your definition as you write it down. Uh, matter of fact, I think I'll go back up to this one and let's, let's put one more thing on here. Uh, I'll think of this as being 1 over, so if you think of it like this as you write, so 1 over the natural log of the base 
times the original argument and then times the derivative. So the derivative of the argument. So that's why I'm going to say as I run through it. So 1 over the natural log of the base times the original argument times the derivative of the argument. So now, with that in mind, let's take a look at a couple of problems here. Okay, and all we'll do is just write them down as we said. So the derivative of this thing would be equal to, and I think I'll just put a little bar across here. It will be equal to 1 over the natural log of the base times the original argument, which is 3x squared plus 5, and the whole thing, times the derivative of the argument, which would be 6x, and you would be done. That's all it is to it. So natural log of the base times the original argument times the derivative of the argument. Let's take a look at another example. Um, now in this example, um, on a, a lot of these problems it works like this. If you use the log rules first to spread it all out before you take the derivative, it makes the whole problem a lot easier. So let's think of this as being this. Uh, think of this as being equal to, um, again, I'm not taking the derivative yet, I'm just going to spread it out. So think of this as being the log to the base 3 of x squared, and change this into um, x cubed plus 2, and the square root of something is like having it to the 1 half power. So first of all, get rid of the radical. Now the next step, go ahead and use your log rules to spread them out. Now remember, the multiplication turns into addition, so this will turn into the individual logs of the log to the base 3 of x squared, and you're going to add to that the log to the base 3 of x cubed plus 2 to the 1 half power. So again, split it up into two separate parts and multiplication turns into addition. Now again, before you find the derivatives here, continue to take advantage of the log rules. So the next step I'm going to do is take the exponents and bring them down in front using the power rule. So I'll take the exponents and bring them down in front. So you can always, on any log, you can always bring the exponent in front. So what this is going to give me is y is equal to 2 times the log of x to the base 3 plus 1 half times the log to the base 3 of x cubed plus 2. Okay, now just a reminder, at this point I have not yet taken the derivative. So all this was doing is just using the log rules to spread it out, and what that does, it makes the final solution a little bit more simple. So now that I've got it all spread out, finally I'll find the derivative. So the derivative would be, um, I've got the constant 2. Now for the derivative of this thing, I'll use my new rule. So it's 1 over uh, the natural log of the base, times the original argument, times the derivative of the argument. Then I've got plus one half, and again I'll use the new rule. So it looks like this, it would be one over the natural log of the base, times the original argument, which would be x cubed plus 2, time, the whole thing times the derivative of the argument, which would be 3x squared, and I am done. So again, use the log rules to spread it out, bring the exponents down in front, then take the derivative using the new rules. And that generally makes it a little bit easier. Okay, let's take a look at uh, one more example. Now that last one it used a uh, Multiplication turned into addition on this problem. Division will turn into subtraction. So I'm going to do exactly what I've done before and uh, use the log rules to spread it out. So what this will be, and again, I'm not taking the derivative yet. So y will be equal to 
the log to the base 5 of x squared plus 3. Now remember, division turns into subtraction, so this will be minus the log to the base 5 of x cubed. So use your log rules to spread it out. Now again, if you can, take advantage of the fact you can bring the exponent down in front. So I'll take this 3 and bring it down in front. Now I can't take that 2 because this is part of an expression, so you can only bring it down in front if it's an isolated term. So what this is going to be, now again I'll rewrite this. This means that y would be equal to the log to the base 5 of x squared plus 3, and then I'll have minus 3 times the log to the base 5 of x. So get it as simple as you can. So again, we'll kind of put some brackets around it. This part right here is just using the log rules to spread the problem out. Now that you've got it spread out now, go ahead and find the derivative. So what the derivative is, y prime, using the new rule, it would be, I think I'll put a line across here to start with, uh, it would be 1 over the natural log of the base times the original function times the derivative, the whole thing times the derivative of the original, uh, original argument, which would be 2x. So 2x. Then you've got minus, and you've got 3, and I think I'll put this part in brackets. Now again, use your uh, new rule. So this is going to be 1 over the natural log of the base times the original argument times the derivative of the original argument, which is 1. And you are done. So again, use the log rules to spread it out first, bring the exponents down in front, then find the derivative using the new rule. So that's a couple of examples of uh, exponential functions and log functions other than base e. But remember, uh, these will actually cover the base e ones too, so if you want to, you can just skip the base e ones, go to these, and they'll work all the time.